The most annoying thing ever is coming up with a drum groove and then having to move on to the next stage of the track, which is drawing in some type of melody. But you're not inspired. You don't know what to do. Today, I'm going to show you a method called melodic slicing, a method that allows you to take samples, chop those up and create melodies from that. Let's dive in. So this track is called Fang Tango by Matthew DK, and it has no melody inside. So it starts with a drum groove that sounds like this. It's just drums. And then at a later point of the track, you can hear some type of a melodic string element coming in, but it doesn't sound like an actual instrument. It almost feels like it's just a snippet of an instrument. And notice how those instruments really capture your emotion despite being played very shortly. And I was like, I need to do this. I need to find a way to replicate this. And I have a drum groove that sounds like this. And I want to come up with a melody or some kind of an idea that sparks the inspiration. And here's where the melodic sequencing comes in. So what we're going to do is create a MIDI track over here. I'm going to give this a bluish color. So I know this is somewhat of a melody. And what we can do is go through a variety of samples. And it doesn't really matter specifically which sample you use. I'm going to use a library that contains Middle Eastern strings. I'm going to take the sample and I'm going to place it to where it says drop instrument here. And then you're going to put this onto slice mode. You can dial down the sensitivity and then you can already start playing the sample if you hit record arm in this track. All right, so I'm playing some notes on my MIDI keyboard right now. And whenever I play a note, it corresponds to the according slice here. And if I play a lower note, it plays a slice here. If I play a higher note, it plays a slice here. And this changes according to the sensitivity that I set it to. You can also slice by beat. So it then slices by a fourth note division, or you can also set it to 16th triplets, which gives you really snappy sounds. But I'm going to stick to transient for now. You can also go to manual and set your slices yourself by double clicking, which can be really practical. But again, transient usually gives me the results that I'm looking for. Right now it's set to mono. So whenever I play two notes simultaneously, it only chooses one of those notes to be played. But if I change it to poly, it plays both of those notes simultaneously. Bombastic side eye. <laughs> and you can also put it to through. Then it'll play the sound from beginning to finish, but I usually don't want that. Mono or poly. Those two usually give me the best results. So let's put it on a mono for now. And what I'm going to do now is utilize this string sample that I've just found and simply load up a few effects. First, I use this newly released reverb plugin by Sound Toys. It's a plate reverb, which gives you really eerie and long reverbs. And again, this is just a recommendation. You don't necessarily need it. It's just something that I prefer using because it's fun. Yeah, set it to a decay time to about four and take out the low end here. Make sure that the dry wet is set to around 50% and then you can just start switching through these modes here. This one's kind of cool. And then you want to load up a delay that can give you some kind of a dotted eighth note delay. Echo by default has this feature, dotted eighth note. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm also going to use sound toys for this. Echo Boy Jr. is a plugin that I really like. Setting it to this memory mode, adding a bit of a low cut, slight high cut, dotted eighth note, cranking up that feedback to above 50%, maybe dialing back the dry wet a bit. See how it slowly starts to fade out. And if you crank up the feedback time over here, it starts generating you melodic textures, which can be really interesting to create pads. But again, I'm going to keep it at around 60%. And I'm going to play this alongside my drum groove to see how it sounds. All right, so a couple of dissonant notes for these long performance sounds. There's usually a lot of improvisation going on. So that includes notes that I don't necessarily like. Therefore, I'm just going to go into a different sample pack containing any type of melodic sample 
and that doesn't really matter. I know that in Tulum I have a couple of ambient swells that you could take as well, for example this one here. Notice there's a bit of a click at the beginning there. You avoid that by adding a bit of fade in time. Perhaps like two milliseconds is enough. And to create a more plucky sound, you can just drag this fade out to the very top. And as a matter of fact, you can also change the pitch of the sample over here. So if you play that with the drum groove now, Interesting, very interesting. You can also do the same for a longer sample like this one over here. Nice. And to give the sample a bit more variety, you can go into controls and use this LFO section over here to add some more movement to the sound. And what I usually like doing is giving the filter a bit more movement. So let's go back into sample first and select a sample that isn't as plucky as this one here. Maybe one that's a bit longer. This one perhaps. Nice. So again, controls, use this filter knob, dial it back down a bit, give it a bit of resonance, a bit of peak here, you see. You start getting this really strange dub delay type sound, and then you want to use this LFO that seems to have this shape over here to automate that filter. So crank it all the way up. So you're getting a bit of a sweep, like a joint, joint, joint. But we want different movement, right? So we're gonna select notes. So it actually syncs up with our host tempo of 120 BPM. You can also assign the velocity to your filter. So the harder you play the note, the more square sheet becomes. Really interesting. And you can also map this LFO to your panning so the sound pans more within the frequency spectrum. And you can also change the shape of the LFO to random so it's always irregular. Transpose it down perhaps. That's lovely. You can also change the pitch. And this gives you really interesting results. Sometimes you can also automate the pitch every now and then for some variety. And if we play that with the drum groove, But again, I'm going to scroll through my sound until I find a proper sound. And you can really take anything for this. You can also take some kind of vocal, you can take guitar sounds, marimbas, for example, here. Let's try a guitar. Well, if that isn't beautiful, then I don't know what is. All right, so now I spent a bit of time going through my favorite sample packs, my favorite sounds. So I'm gonna play you those individually, starting with the guitar. And then we have this ambient swell. We got the synth over here. some song starters. And some chords. Nice. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like these sounds, feel free to grab them using the link down below. Also, I'm going to make this project file available on my Patreon page. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.